Hey guys and welcome back for another Jordan Peterson reaction video. Now this one is kind of interesting. I don't know exactly how I feel about it or how I feel about the gentleman who is speaking with Jordan Peterson. I'm still kind of iffy on it. I want you guys to watch it with me and tell me what you think. Oh, and by the way, I did end up getting The 50th Law, which is the book by Robert Greene and 50 Cent, so you can expect a review on that within the next few days. Let's watch. So let me give you one exa other example, if I may, because it's particularly painful to me. There's a wonderful painter, I'm, I'm very, an artist I'm very fond of, called Rex Whistler. English artist from the early 20th century. Everybody adored him. He was clearly an exceptionally love, lovable human being and an exceptionally talented artist. And his first artwork was a mural for the Tate that he, he did in his early 20s. And he worked all around the clock for months and months on end to complete this mural called In Pursuit of Rare Meats. It's a fantasy, a beautiful fantasy um, landscape and an Arcadian landscape. So it goes around all four walls of the gallery. And a couple of years ago, a group whose whose name uh, was White Pube, only consisting of a couple of people, decided that this mural was racist. And they decided it because of two figures, uh, one of whom was a Chinese figure they said was generic, and the other was because in one corner of the forest, in one of the bits of the restaurant, a tiny figure about two inches high, is a, is a young black boy clearly in distress being pulled on a chain by a woman in a white frilly frock. Now, clearly, Rex Whistler, he, in, he always included sort of ugly things like this. There's a drowning child, a white, drowning white child elsewhere in it. It's clearly et in Arcadia ego, you know? That's clearly what he's saying. He was always <laughs> saying this. All of his work always included this. You know, there'd be a tomb, or he'd, he even painted himself in things as a lowly street sweeper, you know. And he had a wonderful sense of humor and a wonderful uh, and dark sense of the macabre nature of all things, even in Arcadia. This was decided two years ago by the Tate to be a racist painting. And they have closed the room. And Actually, you know what, guys? After a little bit of research, I came to find out that the restaurant is no longer open at all. Until further notice, they looked into whether or not they could actually remove, after 100 years, actually remove... Stop him really quick. Now that we've seen that the restaurant is officially closed, it goes to show you that the general public actually feels exactly how I feel. Like, that's not cool. Like, not cool. I did not know you were there. Like, that is definitely, definitely racist. I just don't agree with it. Like, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that's racist. And the way he's saying, like, it was deemed racist. Like, in other words, he doesn't think it's bad. He's looking at it as, like, this artistic form. And I understand the era that it came from that was normal. But we're in a different time now, sir. Black people are not oppressed like we were, sir. We can have and do anything we want now, okay? And we don't appreciate stuff like that. But we'll let you continue. This from the walls of the gallery. And they, it seems that they can't because part of it's on plaster. So they've locked the room. And the reason I mind this, among many other reasons, is because they have posthumously declared Rex Whistler to be a racist. They said that he, has ref he reflected the racist attitudes of his time. Rex Whistler died on his first day in action in Normandy in 1944. How dare these people do this? How dare they do it to everybody in our past, to all of our heroes, to all of our artistic heroes? How dare they say that the story of the West is purely a story of racism? and xenophobia and and colonialism and slavery how dare they not even bother to weigh that up as i say in one point in the book weigh it up against just let you know let's name a few cities paris florence rome venice just for starters how dare they not be able to even weigh up the achievements that have come from this allegedly unremittingly terrible past. But worse than that, and the point I really wanted to make, Jordan, is I really wanted to make, Jordan, is I really wanted to make, Jordan, is what they are driving us to, and I feel it very, very strongly myself, is how dare you do this to our ancestors? 
How dare you do this to all of our heroes? And then the follow-on thought is this. If you have no respect for my ancestors, I see no reason why I should have respect for yours. If you have no respect... First of all, all those sirens, I want you guys to know that that's whatever's going on with him. <laughs> I don't think it's Jordan Peterson, and it's certainly not in my background. I don't know where this guy lives, but it, it doesn't sound like there's good things going on in the background. Respect for my past and my culture, I don't see why I should continue to say that I have respect for yours. If you have nothing good to say about me, why should I have anything good to say about you. And what I suggest is that in the West at the moment, we are in a potentially short holding pattern, a holding pattern based on politeness, or as Kenneth Clark, Lord Clark of civilization put it, that fundamental uh, aspect of Western culture, courtesy. We are in a period of courtesy where we have been willing to say Okay, you can keep rampaging through the past of the West and assaulting my ancestors and insulting my predecessors and saying all of these negative things about my past. And I am pretending for the time being or saying out of courtesy that you can do this and I will put up with it for a time. I am shocked. He literally just said that, oh, you can act like this and I'll put up with full time, as he said. But it's like, well, what is that supposed to mean, sir? Does that mean like all of a sudden things are gonna go back to the way they were or something? No, if anything, more rights and more non-racist things are gonna be promoted in the generations to come and people with that stupid racist mindset like what you have, sir, will disappear. Because I'll tell you something, Anytime you have art that offends people, like if we had some type of art that had pedophilia or like some bestiality or something extremely offensive, and I hate to even use those for example, but I'm just saying the general public would be upset. They would be horrified about something like that. But it's totally okay to show the level of racism that used to be in a, in a normal, in a restaurant, a banquet center, whatever that was. So people can just sit and eat and watch a little black child naked being pulled and yanked by a chain. And you know what, if I was in that place, uh, I wouldn't even want to go to a restaurant like that. I'm sorry, I, could, I can't sit in a place with racist art on the wall and sit there and eat with like white people. That would make me feel really weird, being black. But of course he doesn't have any understanding of that because he's a white man. You will never understand until you can put yourself in another person's shoes. Think about how it would be to be a black person sitting in a restaurant with racism basically on the wall, okay? And there's other white people around and you're just there like, and then people are probably looking at you like, wow, that's what your people had to deal with. And it's like, it's, it's, I understand to a certain degree, we shouldn't destroy people's art, right? But when it's extremely offensive, at least that part of it, should be obliterated or just taken out because you know we wouldn't leave up bestiality we wouldn't we wouldn't leave a mural of like child pornography you know what i'm saying we wouldn't do stuff that was extremely offensive to to everybody but if it's only offensive to a small minority then i guess it's okay because the majority says it's okay it's art i don't know tell me what you guys think and i will see you next time